Everything we need is in here. That's why we surrender and get into Christ and be free of everything else. However, from my experience as a pastor and as a person who loves the Lord, it's not always that easy. Would you agree? So my encouragement for you is to find your spot in Christ. We talked about 33 million reasons out in the world of the lost. And we talked last week about going up high on the mountain or high somewhere or high in your own mind in your prayer chair. And I pray that you did that this week. And what we're doing is we're going high with God and looking down on the lost and the forsaken until finally God will break our hearts to feel like his. Krista called me this, or texted me this week with a an idea about when she prays for people. Do you want to speak it or do you want me to? Go ahead. Okay. It says, as I'm reading my devotional, praying and listening to the Lord, this came to me. I want you to think about this. We're out in the world, and there's lots of people that we don't know. Lots of people that we may want to pray for. When people don't yet know the Lord, they can feel lost and in an unfamiliar territory as they begin taking the first steps to build their relationship with him they're not here they're somewhere but they're not here yet so we come in the Lord and we speak to them and lead them to the Lord but they may not even understand it yet it can be similar to the awkwardness of a first date here we are we meet someone now what do I say have you been there I have. You know God's telling you to speak to that person, but you really don't know what to say. One of the reasons that we don't know what to say is we are protecting ourselves. We're not in the Lord, even though we are. We're stepping out of that, and we're trying to make sure that we don't get hurt. That they don't reject us. That they... And at that point, it has become all about me. If we're in Christ, and Christ tells us to say something, and we say it, it doesn't matter. They have to go through Christ to affect us. And when Christ is there, and he's all that you care about, it can't penetrate we prayed Monday night for a young woman named Michaela and it might help her Krista said to know that sometimes we don't even know what or how to pray and that's perfectly okay you see it's not about us it's all about him it's always only been about him and it will always only be about him God knows our heart and sees our willingness to connect with him. People need to know that it's okay to pray. Lord, I don't even know what to pray right now. Sometimes people get trapped thinking they have to do profound prayers when it's really nothing more than an honest heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God. I thank you, Krista, for sharing that. I want us all to remember, it's not about what you say, it's just about doing if God tells you to. And sometimes you can say, Lord, I don't know what to pray for. So here comes Sally up, and God says, pray for her. It's perfectly okay to say, I feel the Lord wants me to pray for you. I don't know what to say. But I want you to know that God does. And I want you to know that God loves you. And that is a profound prayer to many people. And they need to hear that. So as we keep saying, did you add Jesus to your life or did you surrender to him? Are you fully in there? We talked about testimonies all summer. 
what are testimonies? They're simply stories of the tests that you've made it through and come out better and more godly because of it. That's what a testimony is. And I want to thank personally every person that has taken the time to come up and share their testimony this summer. Every person in this room has been through test in their life. Some of us know it, some don't. The Lord's leading me to teach about accepting Jesus and surrendering to him. Now, a lot of times I hear, and I've been guilty of this myself, that the devil is the one doing this. Well, I want you to know that the devil is under the authority of Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is on a leash, and he can do nothing unless God allows it. For our goods. Please say, for our good. So when we choose to allow ourselves to be in Jesus, today we're going to look at how we enter. Because when we choose and have chosen to be in Christ, and 216 times it is written that we are in Christ, so we must be in Christ, or Christ wouldn't have kept telling us that in his word. But when we come into Christ, guess what we do? Many times we come in with our stuff. Now I'm going to read again Psalm 139, verse 1. And it says, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. So when I come into Christ, I'm not fooling God. He already searched me. He knows he knows everything that I've been through. He knows every test that I've had victory with. He knows the test that I feel defeat with. He knows who has come against me. He knows everything about me. I don't want us to miss that today. Because I think a lot of times we play with that. And we think that it's okay. God, you know, it's not important to God. It is very important to God. It is so important to God that he sent his son Jesus to die for us, to free us from that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use a visual here. This is you when you're born. You see all the dirty marks on it? None. When we go through healing and deliverance and I say to the people before they walk out of that room, do you see Jesus holding up a white piece of paper? And every person has said yes. And I'll say to them, what's on it? And every single time they say nothing. Because when Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. Amen. Amen? But when we come into Christ, guess what happens? We don't come in purified. But we can and, but many times we come in with something in our childhood that's hurt us. Perhaps we've been told we're no good. Perhaps we've had a failed marriage. Perhaps we've had sins before that we sh are ashamed of. Perhaps we've done this. Perhaps we've stolen. We can go through all of the Ten Commandments. Because guess what? Every one of us, in one way, shape, or form, who has broken every one of them. So that puts good ten. I've had idols. I've used your name in vain. I have not kept your day holy. I have not honored my parents. I have not, um, I have stolen. I have killed and been angry and murdered in my heart. I have committed adultery. I have looked at someone with lust, same thing. I have stolen. I have lied. I have cheated. Bum, 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 bum. The devil knows that too, but the only thing he knows is that he can lie to you and tell you you are a failure. So if you believe that, 
and you take this paper and come into Christ with that in there, you just overloaded your jar. And what God wants you to do is start taking it out. So, I have had an idol. I repent. I'm so sorry, Lord. I am forgiven. I have dishonored the Lord's name. So, I repent. Father, I am so sorry. Give me the strength to not do that again. I have not kept your day holy. And the devil tells you all kinds of lies and you repent and it's gone. I have lied. The devil will tell you you're so bad because you've lied. You are just so alone and what would people think? We don't care. I repent and I'm forgiven. Because it says here, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I get up. You, Lord, understand my thought from far off. You search my path and my lying down. And you're aware of all my ways. Oh, but I thought lustful thoughts. I repent, it's gone. Oh, I failed. I repent, it's gone. Oh, what else? I've stolen, it's gone. I repent. I've wanted what others have. I repent, it's gone. I have been a failure. People say I'm not worth it. I don't go by their words anymore. I know who you say I am, Lord. I repent, it's gone. Oh, but I have to do this or you're not going to love me. Your word doesn't say that, Lord. It's a lie. I repent for believing it. It's gone. Um, what else? Get rid of it. We are in Christ. We are sealed. We are set free. And now we have an assignment to do without the junk. It is gone. It is finished. And Jesus is who gets the credit because he took it all to the cross. So when our little person entered into Christ and brought with him past beliefs, generational curses, things spoken over them, things spoken by them, poor self-esteem, guilt, blame, shame, condemnation, criticism, what does he do? What does he do? He repents. He repents. Repent means turn away from. Two weeks ago, Cheryl stood here and taught about watching our words and knowing God's word. If we know what God's word says, we will start to speak what God says when we're in Christ. If we're still speaking what Cindy says, then we need to get closer to Christ. We need to get in Him. We need to get into His Word. We need to start speaking that out. How do we do it? By repenting. There is nothing. Say nothing, please. There is nothing that you have done or will do that God will not forgive. Say nothing again. Nothing. But what if the enemy reminds you of it? Because he is a liar. And the only thing he knows how to do is point out all the things that are against you. But we have nothing against us. Because Jesus took it all to the cross. This stuff is nothing. It's already paid for. It's already washed clean. It's already made new. That's who I am in Christ. And verse 6 says... Well, 5 says, you put yourself behind, before me, you keep your hand on me. Look where you're at now. And verse 6 says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's lofty. I can't phantom it. It is hard for us with our feeble little worldly minds. 
to think of a God that's as glorious as he is that loves us that much. But this is where you are. Based on God's word, which is truth, this is where you are. This is who you are. Words can make you feel sick to your stomach. Am I right? Anybody ever felt sick to their stomach when they said something or thought something or someone spoke it over them? King Solomon said, the words of a grumbler churn like indigestion and they descend into the innermost chambers of the stomach. Negative words stir up deep inward feelings. Did you ever notice you could be going around really good knowing you're in Christ and then all of a sudden somebody says something and it triggers a memory or a feeling and all of a sudden you're not okay anymore. What we do when that happens is we tend to begin to project our feelings on others. Let me give you an example. If you think If you don't like someone and you think they don't like you, every time you're around them, you're going to begin to think that they looked at you funny or you're going to think that they're talking about you behind your back or whatever. You're projecting what you think and feel onto someone else. Lee, where is that in the Bible that that's okay to do? I haven't found it yet. You haven't found it yet? Okay. Have you? Okay, let me know if you find it. And yet when we're around people that say how much they love us and how great of a job we do, we project that too. But we don't want to be on a roller coaster. Oh, today people love me. Today they don't. Oh, today they love me. I'm going with this group. Nope, this group's not fun to be with. God didn't tell us. He said, make your way straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your roller coaster? No. Path. Amen. Emotional swings are a terrible way to gauge a human relationship. But we do that. But it's far worse to characterize God according to those feelings. If we are in Christ, my feelings are mine and they're not his. Christ's feeling, I am now new in Christ. When I get in Christ, my feelings are mine. That's not what God says about me. I can get rid of each and every negative feeling by repenting and washing clean my mind, my heart, my words with the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to take us to Romans 12. And this was really amazing today. I read my Bible every day and my daily reading today was Romans 12. I That you can't make up. It begins with, the heading was, A New Life in Christ. Fasten your seatbelts. We're going in. Romans 12, verse 1 says, I urge you, therefore, brothers, this is Paul. He's going to urge us by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable service of worship when we carry all this stuff we're not presenting ourselves. get rid of it sit down this week every time you hear but you did this but you did that what if what if what just shut it up and say who you are in Christ. Verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world. The world's out here. I don't have to go out there anymore. I don't have to be concerned about it. 
I don't have to listen to all the things that are going on because when I'm in here, I'm in Christ and I know that he's got me and I know I'm protected and I know things are going to happen that I don't like. But with him, I can get through it. That's why we praise. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God wouldn't have told us that through St. Paul if it wasn't true. God knows that it's your mind that you hold all these things in. And that's what the devil likes to work on, reminding you of everything that you've done wrong in your life. The truth is, we've all fallen, fallen short. There's not one in this room, look around the room, as much as you love each other, there's no one in this room that has not fallen short. That's what testimony, testimonies tell us. But you know, when somebody comes up and gives their testimony, did you ever notice that the love of Christ comes through you for them and all of a sudden you love them more than you loved them before they gave their testimony? You know why? Because you're happy to see that they can walk through it. And that gives you hope and courage and encouragement that you too can walk through it. And it also tells you that we're new in Christ. Our past is redeemed. Our presence makes sense. And our future is secure. We're in Christ. Verse 3 says, For I say, though the grace given to me, to everyone among you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sound judgment according to the measure of faith God has distributed to every man. We don't want to get prideful. We don't want to think we've got it and the others don't. I hear Christians say that. And my skin crawls. Oh, you know, well, they, they do this and they don't do that. You can. But what are you proclaiming? That you've got more God than they do? That you know more than they do? It's by the grace and mercy of God that we have anything. And thank Him that we can be in Him. And in Him, all things are made new. For just as we have many parts in one body and not, not all parts have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ. Are we one body in Christ? Oh yeah, Pastor. Is that the truth? The whole truth? Nothing but the truth? Not when we're looking at other churches and criticizing them. Not when we're looking at what other people do and, and putting ourselves up in a lofty place. Not when we're looking down on people that sin. We have been given a measure of faith. We need to be grateful for what we've been given. We need to be in Christ and multiply what he's given us to serve him. It's all about him. It's always only been about him, and it will forevermore only be about him. It is not about us, and it never will be. There are a lot of preachers who have come and gone, and many of their words have stuck and taught and transformed people, but it's not about them, and they'd be the first to tell you it's all about him. one body in Christ that means you don't say to God I want to be a finger and you made me a thumb you praise him that you're a finger and you do what that finger is assigned to do I want to be a mouth and you made me a brain then you keep learning and let someone else speak the truth we all need each other if it's all about me and I have to learn everything, speak everything, think everything, love everything, I, 
I'm going to tire out. That's why we need each other. That's why we celebrate that we come here together. That's why we grow together and go deeper together because everyone has a diverse gift according to God and his grace. If prophecy is your gift, then do it according to your proportion of faith. And that doesn't necessarily mean tell the future. It can mean just speak. Speak the truth. If service is your gift, then serve according to the measure of faith and grace and mercy that you've been given. That's why when you do that, you get so joyful. Because you're doing exactly what God wants you to do. He who teaches in teaching, use it to all that's in you. If you're a teacher, teach. If you're an exhorter, exhort. Encourage. If you're one that gives generously, give more generously. If you're one who rules with diligence, then show mercy with cheerfulness. Whatever God has given you to do, do it with everything in you. How do you know what God's given you to do? You go to Him. You stay in Him. And He's going to direct your path. So here's the rules for a Christian life. I'm on verse 9. 12, Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Hate what is evil. Do I hate what's evil or do I keep going back to it? Cleave to what is good. Be devoted to one another with brotherly love. Prefer one another in honor. Don't be lazy in diligence. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. And persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. And practice hospitality. If I'm in Christ, then guess what? I can't wait to do what Christ would do. Because he's my all in all. He's the one leading me. So then it's going to be easy to bless those who persecute. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not pretend to be wiser than you are. Repay no one evil for evil. Let's say that together. Repay no one How many? No one. How, what no did one. you? No one? No. Even this one that deserves it? There's no name there. Repay no one evil for evil. Commend what is honest in the sight of all men. And if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. That doesn't say, let's catch that one. If it is possible, you can go into the devil's workshop by thinking, because I don't get along with this person, I need to run over and be friends with them and get knocked back and knocked back and then get angry. And you're stepping into the realm of evil. It is not always possible to be peaceable with everyone. Listen to God and do what he tells you and let it go. He's the Savior. He's their Savior. You are not. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to God's wrath. You know what? <clears throat> if it were up to me, and I hurt Emily 
I would much rather have Emily try to get even with me than God. Because maybe I can duck Emily's swing, but I can't. Where can I go from the love of God? Where can I run from God? I might be able to outrun Emily. I'm not sure. But I might be able to get in that healing and prayer room pretty quick and shut the door and she can't get in there. But guess who can? God. Don't avenge yourself. But give place to God's wrath. God's going to take care of it. For it is written. Here we go. Are you ready? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I, God, will repay. That gives me God bumps. And you know what happens to Cindy when I start thinking of that? I don't stay as mad at whoever I was mad at. Because when I realize that the wrath of God can take them out, I pray I don't hate anybody that much that I want to sick God on them. Because when I sick God on them, they're in for big trouble. That makes me easier to be a forgiving person. And that makes me begin to pray for their salvation. But remember, I don't have to live peaceably with them. I don't have to go and make sure that they love me. I'm in Christ. I don't need to be anywhere else. Here is where I want to stay. And if they hurt me, I can pray that God will touch them with his forgiveness and bring them to salvation. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry feed him if he's thirsty give him something to drink for in doing so you're going to reap coals of fire on his head I love verse 21 those of you that are there do not be overcome by evil let's say that do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good it doesn't get any better than that if each of us realizes who we are in Christ and we go through our little repentance ceremony, get all that stuff out of here and just stay in Christ and don't go into evil, but just overcome all evil with good, then the world's going to be a better place and it's going to start with me. Amen.